In this video, we're going to show you how to change the SIR set in your GBLS DAS GDR50. Please take a moment to make sure that you have all of the recommended tools available to you. Although they are not all 100% necessary for the work to be carried out, they do make things a little bit easier. First, we're going to be removing the upper because we won't be needing it for this. You can do so by removing the two receiver pins and sliding it off of the top. If their pins are a little bit stiff, you can use one of the drivers to push them through. Next, we will remove the buffer weight and spring by applying a little pressure to the buffer weight. We can use a driver to lever the buffer stop upwards and out of the receiver while holding the weight in place. To remove the bolt catch, you can use a 2mm hex driver and a rubber mallet being careful not to knock the pin free of the receiver. Once this is done, you can remove the catch and using the tweezers, remove the spring from beneath it. Using the 2mm hex driver, you can remove the two screws in the pistol grip plate before removing it and setting it to one side. With the motor now exposed, you can remove the two spade connectors before removing the motor from the grip itself. Using the 5mm Phillips driver, you can now undo the two screws at the bottom of the pistol grip before removing it, being careful not to snag either of the wires leading through it. Using the triple zero Phillips driver, you can remove the magazine catch, being careful not to lose the screw. You can now remove the three highlighted screws using the 2.5mm hex driver, making sure that the rear takedown pin is pushed out of the way. Making sure the selector switch is in the safe position, we can gently push the gearbox up and out of the receiver. Tilting the gearbox back a little and pulling the motor wires through will make it a little easier to access both sides of the gearbox. Here, at the top of the gearbox, we can see the sear set we're going to be changing and the two silver slotted screws holding it in place. We're going to use the 3mm slotted driver to remove these. Once they're removed, we can gently pull the sear set to see if it's loose enough to be removed from the gearbox. If it isn't, we can loosen the five gearbox shell screws to create some slack using a 2mm hex driver. Each screw only needs a turn or two.
Now that that's been done, the sear can easily be pulled away from the gearbox and placed to one side. To prep the new sear, check if the small spring is already installed or if it's loose. If it's loose, the spring should sit in the small hole on the top of the sear. Pushing the front of the sear down will give you access to fit the spring into the hole with a set of tweezers. Once the spring is installed, work the front of the sear a couple of times just to make sure that it's moving smoothly. To install the sear set into the gearbox, line up the two holes in the sear set with the two holes in the gearbox shell and push it down into position. It should sit as it does in the highlighted image. Once in place, the two silver slotted screws can be fitted and tightened with the 3mm slotted driver. If the five gearbox screws were loosened in removal, make sure to tighten them back down with the 2mm hex driver. Tilting the gearbox back up, the two motor wires can be guided through the bottom before the gearbox is seated back into the lower. Be careful not to catch any of the wires and do not force the gearbox down. Before pushing the gearbox down into a fully seated position, make sure the wires leading to the buffer tube are not twisted and are sitting in their channel as pictured. A small driver can be used to untwist the wires and help guide them down into their channel. Once in place, the gearbox shell should be sitting flush with the top of the receiver on the right hand side. Using the 2.5mm hex driver, we can refit the three screws held in the gearbox into the lower, with the longest screw at the front and the two shorter ones at the rear. Using the tweezers, we can fit the bolt stop spring back into its cutout, followed by the bolt catch. Once the holes are lined up, the 2mm hex driver and rubber mallet can be used again to put the pin back in its place. Once the bolt catcher is fitted, it should be tested to make sure it moves freely with very little resistance. If there is resistance, we can slacken off the three gearbox screws using the 2.5mm hex driver and push the gearbox back a little in the lower before retightening them and testing it again. To fit the pistol grip, make sure the two motor wires are not twisted before guiding them both through the rear wire cutout and sliding the grip down into place. The two pistol grip screws can be fitted and tightened using the 5mm Phillips driver. Pulling both the wires towards the rear of the grip, the motor can now be fitted back into the pistol grip with the positive terminal facing the front. Lightly press the motor down to make sure nothing is in the way of it before fitting the spade connectors onto the corresponding terminals.
The grip end plate can now be fitted back onto the pistol grip. When pressed into place, it should sit flush with the bottom of the pistol grip. Using the 2mm hex driver, the two screws can now be fitted and tightened into place. The buffer spring and weight can now be reinstalled back into the lower. Slide them into the buffer tube using one hand to hold them in place, and using your other hand, slide the buffer stop into its place in the lower. The flat side of the buffer stop should be facing the front. Once the buffer stop is in place, you can lightly tap it down with a mallet to ensure that it is seated properly. To fit the magazine catch, place the catch through the lower before fitting the spring and holding the button in place using the triple zero Phillips driver to tighten it down. You can now reinstall your upper onto the gun for testing. Remember to never dry fire your gun as doing so can damage your hot booking.